Today I'm gonna show you some tiny painting ideas that you can do if you're bored or uninspired or maybe you are inspired but you just don't know what to paint. Seems to be the story of my life. So tiny to me and tiny to you may be two very different things but for me this is tiny. I really love these panels from Ampersand. I usually use their gesso board but I found this clay board in my drawer and I want to use it up. So we're going to use this and there's four panels in here. So depending on how inspired I'm feeling, there could be four painting ideas. The stuff is really great though. It's museum series panel. This is a super smooth surface. So it's actually really good for the paint that I'm planning to use today. I have not used oil paints in almost a year. So I'm gonna be using oils in this video. And as always, you don't have to use the same supplies I'm using. I'm just using what inspires me. So you use what inspires you. Dude, my oil brushes are in bad shape. This one here is like brand new, but these crusties, I feel like I have a reputation for like nasty brushes up on my channel. Would you guys be into like a paintbrush cleaning video with me sometime? Can't wait to use this one on a giant canvas. Oh, woo. It's so fluffy. So I was just downstairs eating and we had some oranges. They're actually clementines that were going bad. So I did a little photo shoot and this is gonna be like the first idea. I think I'm gonna switch things up a little bit for my background. I usually do burnt sienna. Today I'm gonna do this. We'll see how it goes. I'm gonna make this dry faster. My hands are all grossy woosy now. Gonna thin my paint out. I'm gonna do all the underpaintings at the beginning of this video so that they can dry over the weekend and then this coming week I can paint all of these ideas. Okay, this one can dry. We'll do two blue ones. Okay, so for these two, I'm gonna go with my classic burnt sienna color. Okay, the underpaintings are ready, so let's hop into the ideas. So earlier I mentioned taking a photo of some oranges or clementines on my phone. Let's talk a little bit about that for this idea. So I wanted to do a still life painting using things that I already had in my house, but make it simple. So if you're intimidated by doing a whole setup with like a vase of flowers or a bunch of things in a picture, you can focus on just one thing. So I set some clementines on top of a cloth napkin and I decided to just paint what I saw. I cut up one of the clementines and I left the other one whole so I could practice different types of shapes and shading but it's still all the same thing. Now the beauty of this still life is I'm focusing on complementary colors. So you can see this napkin in the background is blue, but the oranges obviously are gonna be orange. <laughs> so blue and orange are complementary colors. And I just thought it would be really fun to do that and kind of make it really bright and just have fun with it. You can do this with like purple and yellow or red and green, whatever you want. Or you don't have to do complementary colors. This is just what I felt like doing. So I wanted to offer it in an idea. Now, the only thing I would change about my painting here is I wish I had made the oranges a little bit bigger. But that's okay. I see it and I can change it for next time. You know, our art doesn't have to be perfect, but if we create because we want to create and we just enjoy the process, it makes art so much more enjoyable. All right, so this was the first idea, just a mini still life with some clementines. I actually thought this one was challenging because I'm jumping back into oil paints and it's been almost a year since I used them. 
but I'm excited to show you the next idea and it's gonna take on a completely different color scheme. So let's get started. For this one, I'm gonna to need to mix up a lot of like pinks. We might need like some orangey colors too. It's always so satisfying mixing colors. Okay, I'm gonna take this little brush again and we're just gonna do the background first, I think. So something that I have been wanting to practice for a long time is clouds. So that's this idea, except it's not just like your average cloudy sky. I want you to kind of have fun with color. You know, you don't have to just do bright blue or like a gloomy sky. You can pick like pinks and purples and do a beautiful sunrise or sunset. So that's what I'm doing. We'll add some lovely textures in through here. You know, I think I'm actually gonna switch up how I'm doing this though. And I'm gonna do the clouds first. So I'm gonna take this really dark bluish periwinkle color. And we're just gonna go in here with this. Just a little side note, I know I'm using oil paints in this video and a very common concern I get about oil paints is like fumes and safety and a lot of people are interested in using them but they have fears around those things. So I just wanted to offer, you can use water-based oil paints if you want to, that might take some of the fear away or you can put stuff in your acrylic paints to make them dry more slowly. Just wanted to offer those two tidbits of info in this video. For the most part, I use this walnut oil. I do have some paint thinner that I keep in a glass jar, but I use it very sparingly. And I actually like to keep a lid on it and I keep windows open and a fan on and stuff. Yeah, I do follow safety stuff. I get that question a lot and I wanted to address it. I really love oil paints because they blend so beautifully. Okay, moving on to a different purple color. We're just gonna start blending different colors now for these clouds. I'm doing really thin layers for this as well because I want this burnt sienna to show through and add some warmth because this is a sunset. But if something like this inspires you, you know, maybe you have your own photo that you could use or you could go on a royalty free image site. I can link a few of those below if you would like reference photos. Yeah, I don't know, I just think Clouds are an easier, more forgiving thing to paint. So if you want to get into painting, maybe proportions intimidate you or whatever, or you just wanna mess around with color, highly recommend painting clouds. So I know I'm giving you folks painting ideas in this video, but I do have a question of the day. Do you have any like go-to things that you paint when you're out of ideas or you just feel like painting, but you want to paint something that's comforting to you and familiar? Like what's your go-to thing? Mine would definitely probably be like, I don't know, flowers or landscapes of some sort. But I am kind of getting into clouds too. I love painting water, but believe it or not, that's something I have to really like mentally gear up to paint because it's actually a really intimidating thing to paint. Okay, I'm gonna add some more like saturated purple in with this. Maybe bring some of the saturated purple up here into this cloud. Now I'm just gonna work my way to like a lighter purpley pink color. All right, so now I'm gonna start with some stuff in the sky. It's cool because like the background of these clouds has like a lot of swirly different like shades of pink and orange. So I'm gonna try to capture that a little bit and we'll roll with it. Ooh. OK, 
Okay, I'm gonna go back through this area here because it seems a little streaky. At least streakier than I want it to be. Oh, down here. Totally forgot about it. <laughs> I should do that part. Okay, here's our little cloud painting. I'm really happy with how this one turned out. It actually didn't take as long as the first painting that we did in this video. And I feel like blending with clouds and stuff is just very easy, very therapeutic, and it's a very approachable subject to paint. So if you're somebody who maybe doesn't know what to paint or you're just getting into painting, I really think clouds are very forgiving. So yeah, hopefully that encourages you to maybe create some clouds. You don't even really have to use paint. I mean, I say that in all my idea videos, but I know I'm using paint. You don't have to, you can use colored pencil. I'm just here to inspire you and give you some artsy prompts. Alrighty, for this idea, I am once again painting things that I already have sitting around at home. So you saw I have this perfume bottle and I set up a little area and I'm literally just going to paint that. Now the challenging thing about this one is I'm painting glass and like a metal reflective lid. So I kept it very simple and I'm only painting this perfume bottle. I made the background pink. So this one is slightly monochromatic with a little bit of variation, but mostly a monochromatic painting. I wanted to really focus on different pinks and then within the bottle, really focus on creating glass and reflections. So for this painting, I mostly just used pink. <laughs> There's a couple other colors that I did use in the bottle and the metal lid, but again, most of it was pink. So painting reflections has always been something that has been intimidating to me. And that's why I wanted to approach it on a smaller painting like this. But realistically, once I simplified everything and I only painted this perfume bottle, it really wasn't that bad. I just focused on exactly what I saw and boom. I think now that I have this painting under my belt and I've worked with glass and this reflective metal lid, I definitely want to continue tackling reflective paintings or just glass paintings, you know. I did do a reflective painting in my etcher sketchbook video recently, but yeah, this has been fun and I feel like I'm learning a lot through this. So yeah, I hope you enjoy this idea and I hope that the process is fun for you if you try it. Alrighty, the final painting idea. What are all these splotches all over the canvas? Well, friends, we are painting poppies. Now this painting idea is particularly fun because I am approaching the sky with this creamy yellow color. And the reason why I'm doing this is because the time of day the photo was taken, <laughs> obviously, I think it was a sunrise. Yes, a sunrise. But I wanted to paint something again that focuses on a different sky color. So earlier we did clouds that were like pink and purple, but now we're doing a yellow sky. And I just think this scene is particularly peaceful because of that. 
but also I just have been paying attention to all the different hues in the sky lately. So I've been a little inspired to capture all those different colors. Now for the foreground, you can see all this greenery here. I'm approaching it with impressionism. There's a bunch of different brush strokes, a bunch of different textures, and I loved this part of the painting. I felt free, I felt like I could just do all these whimsical different things, and it looked cool in the end. So yeah, I hope you enjoy this idea. This was probably my favorite painting of all of them in the video, so I had to save the best for last because not everybody hangs around till the end. But I hope you enjoyed this one. Alrighty, we finished the four painting ideas. So these painting ideas were fairly simple and honestly, none of them were that new or like different or out there, but I wanted to kind of bring it home and give you folks a reminder that you don't have to do something crazy or something that's unthought of to do a painting or to do a drawing. You can do, you know, whatever you see. And sometimes we all just get inspired from seeing other artists create. So I created four simple paintings, four ideas that were not like anything new, honestly. Basically, I just gave you four prompts <laughs> for bored artists or uninspired artists. I hope you enjoyed this though. I thoroughly enjoyed it because I have not oil painted since before I got pregnant. And yeah, it's been a year and it feels good to oil paint again. I really missed it. And I feel like now that I've done these four little paintings, I'm gearing up to do something big like that behind me again. And I really miss painting water, so we'll see. But thank you for sticking around and watching and I will see you next week. Have a marvelous day. Bye. <laughs>